McCoy and the Texas Longhorns stepping out of conference play today, welcoming the UCF Knights to town. Texas looking to stay in control of its Big 12 and National Championship fate. And we've got it coming up for you next on Big 12 College Football Saturday. Longhorn quarterback Colt McCoy is having a Heisman Trophy type season. The Texas native has led the second ranked undefeated Longhorns to 13 consecutive victories. He has 15 touchdowns. Texas has outscored their opponents by a 3 to 1 margin. They have their eye on a national championship. And in comes Central Florida. The Knights are very familiar with Colt McCoy and his game. Two seasons ago, Texas narrowly escaped defeat, besting Central Florida by only three points. Today, the Knights return with vengeance. The second-ranked undefeated Texas Longhorns have a supercharged offense, a devastating defense, and a home crowd passionate about their favorite son. It's College Football Saturday, and we're in Austin, Texas. The University of Central Florida Knights facing the number two ranked team in the nation, the University of Texas Longhorns. Hi everyone, Bill Land, Gary Reasons, glad to have you with us as UT steps out of the Big 12 for this matchup against UCF. Gary, after what happened a couple years ago, I wouldn't think Texas would overlook this club. And after talking to Mac Brown, it appears he's got them focused. Well, they're focused internally, although George O'Leary said they took him to the woodshed a couple years ago, didn't win that football game. I think Mac's got him on track, though. One of the reasons you got to feel good about Texas is the play of Colt McCoy. Not only a Heisman Trophy candidate, but he just seems to add something each week, maybe playing his best football right now. He really is. I tell you, the all-time winningest quarterback in Texas history will be the all-time NCAA leading winner. He's playing very well. 82% completions over the last two Big 12 ball games. And they put a thump on Oklahoma State last week up in Stillwater. Now for UCF, you better not discount this ball club. Coming in 5-3, and three, big come from behind win Sunday against the Marshall Thundering Herd, and they bring the pressure defensively. Defensively, they're the best in Conference USA, and they get to the quarterback a lot. Bruce Miller, their defensive end, puts a lot of pressure, and they do a good job. I tell you, 27 sacks on the season. They know how to get in the backfield and make plays. Eight and a half tackles for loss in each ball game this season. The UCF defense is for real. All right, if you're going to talk defense, you better not slight the University of Texas because Will Muschamp has got his guys fired up. And with more about the Longhorn defense, we'll send it down to Emily Jones. Well, Bill, to call the UT defense stingy would be an understatement. The Longhorns lead the nation in rushing defense. They are second in interceptions and turnovers and third in the country in total defense. Six sophomores start on this defensive unit. They are young, but they are very experienced. They are good, and Matt Brown says they are only getting better. It is the Longhorns that will be on display along with the UCF Knights here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. We've got the kickoff coming up on Big 12 College Football Saturday. Welcome back. Academy Sports and Outdoors and Big 12 College Football Saturday is Texas coming out here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium to take on the University of Central Florida, better known as UCF, the Knights 5-3, and 3-2 three, three and two in Conference USA after their win against Marshall, a thrilling game where they came from 20-7 to seven down, eight minutes to go. Gives them a little momentum coming in here, Gary. Yeah, George O'Leary's got a very resilient team. They've won, won ball games in the second half this season, kind of unique. Six year at UCF, won the Conference USA in 2007, and they are in contention in that tight fit league once again. They'll be playing University of Houston next week, so back to back games against ranked teams for George O'Leary. Now, on the other sideline, you got the veteran Mac Brown, his 12th season here at head coach, as comfortable as I've ever seen him with the team he's got. I know why. Hey, you see him on the field making friends with the ball boys, everybody. He's a great friend here. Everyone in Austin, they love him. His, his record just speaks for itself. All right, Texas will kick it off here today to the Knights of UCF. McDuffie and Baldwin will be deep for Central Florida as Texas at 8-0, 5-0 in the Big 12 with a week break from conference play. Most importantly, ranked number two in the nation, number two in the BCS rankings. And here we go in Austin. Kicked off. 
taken at the six yard line to the 20 and out near the 26 McDuffie for UCF. Let's take a look at our Phillips HD starting lineup for Central Florida. They've been banged up, all kinds of injuries. That makes Hounchell a starter today on that offensive line. Goins from Texas gets his first start as well. In the backfield, Davis taking the place of Harvey. And also, you've got a newcomer, or a relatively newcomer, a change, I should say, as Rob Calabrese is the quarterback in place of Brett Hodges. Hodges, the senior, suffering from bruised ribs, not expected to go, and Harvey, their talented running back, with an ankle sprain, not expected to go. As a result, the carry goes to Davis on first and ten, and Jonathan, a freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, not much there. We'll take a look at the University of Texas defensive group. Boy, that's a stout bunch. And this group up front, led by Kendall, Houston vastly improved. Acho is a ball hawker. And then there you have the sec, the linebackers with Acho's brothers, as well as McElroy and Keenan Robinson. And in the secondary, more on those from the leader, Earl Thomas, in just a moment. Second and 10 for the 26 for Central Florida. Calabrese. Incomplete out near the 50-yard line, trying to hook up with Waters. Now, here's Earl Thomas, who has six interceptions, describing Curtis Brown, his mates. Uh, most athletic guy I've seen since I've been playing ball. Uh, Blake Gideon, uh, brain of the operation. Uh, you got Shockey Brown, long arms, uh, quick jammy all day. Uh, you got A.J. Williams. Uh, he's a ball hawk. Uh, he makes big plays for us. And uh, then you got me. <laughs> yeah, and me, he's got six interceptions of the year and 11 passes broken up. Me is pretty good. He's a heck of a ball player back there, and he has really had a great season so far for the Longhorns. Central Florida, 39% on third down conversion. What do they do on third and 10 for the 26? In trouble. Calabrese is brought down at the 27-yard line, picks up a yard or so, and they'll have to kick it away. Yeah, they would really like to get a lot of first downs, but I think they're going to have some problems because they're losing a lot of their rushing potential this year, Bill, that they've had. 277 rush attempts for UCF, only and 236 of those carries are not playing this football game, so their weapons in the offense are not there. If you take a look at Blake Klingon getting his punt today. So the kick by Klingon and Shipley. Danced around, got to the 41. Great field position for Texas and its first possession. And let's take a look at the HD. Colts HD starting lineup for the University of Central Florida. You just saw their offensive line. We'll come back with the Texas side here in just a moment. So we'll get it straight here as the Longhorns take over first to 10 from their 41 after a 34-yard punt and a two-yard return by Shipley. Colt McCoy company bring them out Monroe at the 41 and not much else there as DJ Monroe gets to start at that spot Corey Hogue makes the tackle Hogue one of their outstanding linebackers for UCF now we'll take a look at the Phillips HD starting lineup for the Longhorns a veteran group on offensive line that just keeps getting better and they provide great protection for the playmakers. Gooden wins come on lately. Shipley, you know about, has been doing it for a long time. And Whitaker and Johnson should get most of the carries at the running back spot. McCoy passing and completing here. And it'll be a first and 10 at the 47. As Colt McCoy connects on that second down play. Yeah, you see his numbers on the season, Bill. Not not tremendous numbers, but good numbers. And I'll tell you, the Colton Coy has played very, very well since they've started Big 12 Conference play. He's just pretty sharp. The last couple of ball games over 82% completions. Look for him to be sharp again today. First to 10 for McCoy. Finds his partner Shipley. And Shipley tugs for a couple of extra yards. In UCF territory about the 42-yard line. Derek Holman makes the tackle for the Central Florida Knights, they are number one in defense in Conference USA in points allowed, total defense, and run defense. There are three linebackers, you just saw, their three leading tacklers. Quick snap as they speed the tempo up for Texas, and McCoy keeps the football 
to the 39-yard line that time before he's brought down by Hogue. Well, I tell you what, the Central Florida wants to do defensively, Bill. Their defensive coordinator, Dave Huxwell, they'd like to keep everything in front of them and minimize the big play. If there's one chink in their armor, it's the big play against their defense, as we see Coach Huxwell on the sidelines calling out the defensive signals. They don't want to give up that big play and a quick score to Texas. They've got a very potent front seven and he likes a lot, and he feels like they can hold up against his Texas run game and inside. They've been giving up just 19 points a game, first in CUSA, 28th nationally. A little pitching catch outside, and Williams has the first down as he has wrestled out of bounds through the 30-yard line of the Knights. Hallman making the stop. And that's the magic of this Texas offense run by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. Put your playmakers out there in space and let them catch the football and run after the catch. It's going to be a long day for George O'Leary if his defense can't take away that short passing game. It's not an easy thing to do against this very explosive Texas offense. Malcolm Williams, his second reception this afternoon for 21 yards. Goodwin. And he is stopped at the 30-yard line. What about taking a look at what we expect here with our Phillips HD Fearless Prediction. Well, I tell you, this football team really has to make a statement today, Bill, when they have an opportunity. They've got to convert those. If you get a turnover, a special teams play, you've got to put points on the board. And I just talked about big plays. That's what we mean by keeping a lid on it. Don't make those big, explosive plays down the field that really Texas would like to do in this type of football game. Now, George O'Leary said we really got to make them earn everything they get. Second and long, and the handoff across the 30 down to the 28 Cody Johnson gets his first carry a sophomore from Waller Texas will continue with fearless predictions brought to you by Phillips HD well the Longhorns guess what Mac Brown is coaching this week the enemy is us you know they've got to be focused internally and he says it just doesn't happen you just don't roll that helmet out there and use that Longhorn on the side of the helmet to make things happen they have got to make the place defensively they've created turnovers this year they have done what they needed to to win football games and he told these guys hey winning breeds complacency don't let that happened to you. Keep it focused every week. McCoy on third down. Incomplete. Knocked away. Intended that time for Butner and Greco was in on the play. The senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Well, you see UCF, you have a little pressure on the front there. You get made Colt McCoy throw a little bit slow. Speaking of Mac Brown and how he feels, it's part of our Geico quote. It's not about the Big 12 this week. National implications. We're in the mix. And if you want to stay there, you need to play well. Well, he's coached his guys all season long that, you know, last year they lost that ball game against Texas Tech. They've got to win all of them. That's their focus this year. And they take it one week at a time, and they get little themes each week. We'll have more on that. Hunter Lawrence for the field goal attempt. And it is up, and it is no good. So Texas denied here, and UCF will take over. We'll take a brief break. No score early going. UCF and Texas in Austin. Welcome back to Austin. A beautiful day for college football here in Central Texas. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you. The Longhorns, after their first possession, being denied points on a missed field goal attempt for 44 by Hunter Lawrence. And UCF taking over now at the 27-yard line for the second possession for Southpaw Rob Calabrese. He's out of Iceland, New York. East Iceland High School there. He broke all the records of Boomer Esaias in these high school days. And the keeper here and gets a couple of positive yards. Time for Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. Let's check in with Darren Horton. Bill, number four, Iowa have been struck. All right, thank you very much, Darren. Iowa, one of those few remaining unbeaten. Of course, Texas in that category here. Calabrese rolls out on a second down and six play and underthrown, incomplete. Third and six coming up for Central Florida. Uh, Calabrese, Bill, let's talk a little bit about him. He started the first couple of ball games for the Knights this season. Had a couple. He's just a sophomore. He played some last year. Had some starts under his belt a year ago. He actually won the job in spring training. And they come into the season. Didn't play particularly well early on. That's why they made the move to change at quarterback to let Brent Hodges take over. But uh, he's got some experience. He's got some tools. He's just a young player. And even mature a little bit more at the quarterback spot. Calabrese with a third down situation here, and you see what Texas has been doing defensively in this situation. They come after him. Oh, now they drive him down. A flag is thrown. Yeah, it's going to be a horse collar tackle on the quarterback there. You got him wrapped up. You just got to make that play and not cause a penalty on it. 
Robinson brings him to the ground. He comes inside. An inside pressure right in the A-gap. And a foul for a horse collar, number 38. The 15-yard penalty for the previous spot, and it's a first down. Yeah, you see the hands up to the back of the neck. Behind the neck, that is definitely the picture-perfect uh, horse <laughs> collar tackle. And Robinson makes a huge play, but it's going to be all for naught. It's going to be a first down from the original line of scrimmage for the Knights. Yeah, talk about taking a positive for Texas turn to a negative. Now, UCF, we told you, banged up. Hodges and Harvey, who were both big in last week's win, and Harvey, their yeah, leading rusher, not expected to play today. Harvey with the ankle injury and Hodges bruised ribs. Hodges, a transfer from Wake Forest, just starting to get into the flow in his only year remaining at Central Florida. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they get their offensive firepower from today. Pitch goes to A.J. Guyton, and Guyton has the first down as he gets to the Texas 42-yard line where Nolan Brewster, the sophomore from Denver, Colorado, stops. Now, A.J. Guyton is one of the speed guys, and he's coming around on the back side. You see him in motion here, and he's going to come around and get that pitch. But you take a look at the ball, ball players that uh, UCF has as they get around the outside of the defense here for Longhorns. That's a nice designed play. You know, you got Ross and Guyton. Those are the wide receivers with play, big play make ability. But then Aiken on the other wide receiver, he can get down the field. So they do have some weapons, but they'll have to find ways to get the balls in their hands. Without the bulk of their carriers around, they're going to have to spread it to different people. Yes, Guyton, they will. that was just his second run of the year. He picked up 11 for the first down. And they come back to Davis here. Jonathan Davis, the freshman running back, as Robinson stops him. Davis, only four carries on the season before today. Yeah, watch the linebacker step up and hit Keenan Robinson, number one, make a good square hit there in the hole. That's what your linebackers you want to do. For Texas, all three linebackers definitely get in the mix. Rod McElroy and Keenan Robinson and company. And you see Jonathan Davis's numbers on the season. Not a lot of experience. Only four rushes coming into this ballgame on the season. Second and seven after he picked up three. The ball at the 39 of Texas. Davis again. Not much, but a couple to the 35-yard line. Bill, for, for UCF, they brought in a new offensive coordinator this season. That's Charlie Taff. And Charlie Taff has a, got a great offensive mind, actually coaching the Canadian Football League the last several years, was the head coach at the Citadel for a number of years. He has brought a different style of offense. What George O'Leary wanted to pick Coach Taff up in the booth right there in the middle. And you see him there? He's brought a different mindset to get the ball down the field and make more explosive plays. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Emmanuel Ancho stopped that last play from UCF. Todd gets after it here with a third and three situation. Calabrese. Cuts it back up. Got the first down. Nifty run by Rob Calabrese as Roderick McElroy makes the stop. You know, that's one of the dynamic things that Rob Calabrese has as a sophomore quarterback. He is probably more mobile, definitely is, than Brent Hodges. And they like his playmaking ability, definitely outside of the pocket. And on a speedy defense here against Texas, does a nice job of getting that first down. Last year, he played a number of games, 39% completion percentage, but threw for 664 yards, seven touchdowns. This year, he came in 9-19 for 133 and two scores. Both of those touchdown passes against Rice. That's the up kind of win. It's third in a row coming in here. First and ten. Calibre's got protection. Now breaks down, and he is brought down. Longhorns stay after him, and Blake Gideon and Kendall in on the play. Yeah, Kendall just comes to the defensive end spot, and, you know, this is something that he's going to have to deal with all day. Calabrese is the quarterback for UCF. This front four for Texas, they will rush forward. They will get to get home most of the time. They come off the block. You take a look at Ocho and, and Kendall just meeting there at the, for the sack. So this Texas front has been superlative all season for the, for the Longhorns. They've done a great job all year. They've got 20 sacks on the season, Bill, and over 90 quarterback pressures. They get back there in a hurry. That was Kendall's third sack of the year. As a result, second and 16. Calabrese keeps, dives. It's up about eight, it appears. Down near the 31. McElroy there to make the stop on the UCF quarterback. Robinson also in on the play. I think that's kind of going to be kind of George O'Leary's mindset here. Let's kind of keep it simple. Keep the ball in our quarterback's hands. Let him do some run plays and dynamic plays inside. And it's okay to go out there on third down and bring up third and ten here for him. So they don't want to try to make things happen in a big way. They like to extend plays and really have long drives. Third and ten at the 31 of Texas. Calabrese, nowhere to go this time. 
Calibre is still somewhat inexperienced. McElroy and Jones bring him down. It looks like he focused on one receiver, wasn't there. Tucks it under. Well, guess what? The secondary all manned up outside. One, two, three. He looks at all three of them. They're all covered man to man. And then the pressure just eats up the, this, the UCF offensive front. They get home again. George O'Leary here with a pretty good drive with their second uh, offensive series getting inside of Texas territory. Timeout call for the Knights of Central Florida. So George O'Leary and UCF will think it over here with a fourth down coming up. A little surprised here on fourth down and 10 from the 31 of Texas, a 48, maybe 49-yard field goal attempt. No. George O'Leary's decided, or so it appears, he's yeah. going to punt it away. He sent Blake Klinga now. I, I really think you've got to either go for it here on fourth down to the 31-yard line or attempt a field goal here. Blake Klinga, their punter is out there on the field. Maybe George has got something up his sleeve, but it's not the call that I think I, that he needs to make in this situation. Klinga trying to, one of those coffin corner kicks. It's fair catch. Yeah, he's and got, he's got a field goal kicker that's made a 50-yard field yeah, goal already this toy. season, which is why we're really uh, surprised at that call. Going to make Texas go the long haul if they're going to score. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back to Austin. No score in the first quarter between Texas and UCF, and it will be Veterans Day on Wednesday. So the Texas Longhorns paying tribute to the veterans and the armed forces here with this helmet decal that they're wearing today. Also, Mac Brown asked that each of his players dedicate this game to someone in their lives that is in the armed forces. Also, he had military personnel come and speak to the team this week. And serving as honorary captain today was the U.S. commander of the European Armed Forces. Thanks, Emily. And all that was planned well in advance of the tragedy at Fort Hood. So uh, certainly our thoughts and prayers are with all the families of the victims and those involved in that uh, tragic situation there. Texas taking over on its own 12-yard line. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships from just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. You know, the little sticker on the helmet and the armed forces, that's one of the little things that Mac Brown has tried to focus his team on, you know, to get, get them to come together more and be focused on this football game. Those are little mental things that he builds up with, try to keep them very focused on the task at hand. McCoy trying to pick it up on the ground and got ankle tackled. <laughs> at the 14-yard line. And things just kind of broke down for him. The cat coverage in the secondary for UCF was pretty good on that play, so Colt McCoy is just going to have to try to get up the field and do what he can. You see Miller number 49 there, and you see the shoestring tackle by the defensive end, just grabbing him there. Otherwise, Colt may have a first down, but Boy, he great get, effort. Yeah, he got three yards positive there. It's pretty good stuff from Colt. Great effort by Miller to just keep scrambling after him. And it's a third down and eight now for Texas from the 14, McCoy. Good protection. Shipley knew where to go as far as that first down marker. And he'll move the chains for Texas. Shipley coming in a minimum of four recep receptions every game the last 19 games. Well, no doubt about it. He's a senior. Knows where to go to get that first down. Pushes the defensive back off and definitely gets there. And working over there on Justin Bodie, the corner, who is going to be their, their boundary corner for today. And kind of hold up things there. You look at Shipley's numbers. 193rd career completion. Now you Colt, what a duo, yeah. huh? Best ever in UT history. Body made the tackle on the last play. They picks it back to McCoy. The ball is loose and fumbled and falling on it. One of those offensive linemen coming to the rescue that time oh, as Tanner comes up with the fumble recovery. Charlie Tanner, the senior from here in Austin out of Anderson High School. Little razzle-dazzle by Greg Davis trying to get the ball handed off inside. You see the handoff here. Then he's going to, this is Fozzie Whitaker. He pitches it back to Colt. Number seven, John Childs, is wide open at the 50-yard line down the field. Lucky that the Longhorns able to get on top of it because Colt did not find the handle on that football, but kind of a wide open play here for the Longhorns. So it is second and 23 now as they're backed up. McCoy under pressure and dumps it off and got a little room there as Monroe and Whitaker takes the football out near to where he stepped out, about the 16. Still got plenty, uh, plenty of room to get to, though, because he lost a lot of play, a lot of yardage on that previous play. So a little chunk play, get it back there from Fozzie Whitaker on the screen, and Colt tosses it out there to him. Whitaker finally healthy. The sophomore of Houston, they've always felt he was their most explosive back, and the guy that just brings the most to the table just been brought down by injury after injury about the time he would get his opportunity. McCoy, Shipley. The 20, 
and brought down there, and Texas will have to kick it away. So if you go back to George O'Leary's thinking, pin him deep, make him go long, trying to play a field position game, it appears he's going to win the battle for the moment. Yeah, kind of an umbrella-style defense that time. Keep him deep to short. Everybody, he's on top of all the routes. The only open route was the short receiver dragging across Jordan Shipley, and the UCF defense does a nice job of coming up and making the sure tackle, forcing another punt here for Texas. Hogue made the tackle on that play as Texas will kick it away here. The Knights of Jonathan Davis and A.J. Guyton deep. As you look at Tucker's numbers on the year, just under 40 per kick, his average. A sophomore from Austin Westlake High School, Justin Tucker, gets it away cleanly. And it is taken at the 37-yard line. Guyton, Texas, good coverage on the play. And it stopped at the about the 41. Well, George O'Leary chose to punt the football uh, from his from the 31 yard line of Texas and have won now the field position battle. Pinned him inside the 10. They did not convert on that. And now, consequently, after the punt, they get the ball at their own 42 yard line, which is pretty good field position now for UCF to start offensively. 40 yard punt, four yard return. We'll send it back down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, it appears that the UT team has come out a little bit sluggish, maybe the early kickoff, but for UCF, they clearly see this as an advantage. They practice in the morning. Coach George O'Leary says the biggest thing is getting them up. Once we get them up and get them out on the field and get that out of the way, we feel like it's to our advantage. It seems to be, as you mentioned, working for them today. Yeah, it's certainly uh, not going to be a problem for them. This one is on the ground, and Davis... Carries it out. The other thing, Gary, we mentioned these injuries, but you've got some young guys who get some opportunity to play in front of them. They may not have 100,000 here today, but going, wow, I'm going to get to go play at the University of Texas, number two team in the nation. These guys have got to be charged from UCF. Well, you know what? This is a UCF kind of a football game where it can make a statement about their program. George O'Leary knows this. The players know this. He has sold it to their football team that this is an opportunity for them to really make a statement about who they are and where they can go. This is an effort that they would like to come out on the, on the, on the top end of it, certainly here at the end of the day against Texas, the number two team in the country. Second and two, and complete for the first down. Texas Territory down near the 40, maybe inside the 40-yard line. Ricky Kay, the receiver, his ninth grab of the year, junior from Deltona, Florida. Yeah, you're kind of the age back there. You see him coming down underneath behind the line of scrimmage, and the, you see the pressure, I mean, the, the momentum by the defense taking him to the front side, and he comes out the back door. Good throw and catch there. That's good execution. UCF using misdirection to help him, and Kay making the first down. So the Knights moving the football here after the exchange of on the punt, and that'll wind down the end of the first quarter here. So I don't think anybody expected 0-0, but that's what we've got. Central Florida and second-ranked Texas at the end of the first quarter. Big 12 College Football Saturday returns after this from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Around the yard. Scoreless first quarter here in Austin with second-ranked Texas and Central Florida. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones with you. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, they've only given up, what, 46 yards of offense, but you think some adjustments will be needed to make. Yeah, I think he needs to tighten things up there. And he's a smart, fast-twitched brain guy. I think he really <laughs> is. One of the smarter defensive coaches I've ever met. And he will get his guys tuned up to play and make some adjustments that are necessary to hopefully slow down UCF. Yeah, you're thinking, well, wait a minute. They've only had 46 yards in a quarter. Well, Will Muschamp will tell you, no, no, we aren't cutting it. I mean, they don't, they're not satisfied with that. See what the Knights do here on the first to ten. Davis outside and a few yards, about four or five. Well, his players, we're talking about Will Muschamp, certainly respect him. Let's hear it from Earl Thomas and what he thinks of the D.C. It's a Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. He's fired up, uh, throwing stuff around the room. Uh, just getting us fired up for the game, and uh, it's just it's just it's every day for Coach Muschamp, and uh, it just brings a lot of confidence in the defense. He's fiery. There's no doubt about it. They make big plays. He shares with them. It seems like he's playing out there every down with his defense. His defense faces a second and five here. Davis again, the handoff breaks the tackle, cuts outside the first down and more. And this freshman, Jonathan Davis, just 5'9", but he's a solid package, 195-pounder, bumped out by Deion Beasley. Yeah, got, got pushed into the job today. Brent Harvey not able to play their leading tailback. Only four uh, carries coming into this ball game here, but he's manning up, breaks one tackle, gets around the edge, he gets a first down, so UCF is knocking on the door. Picks up 12 yards on that carry. 
And the Knights now another first down, and it's at the 22-yard line as you look at the total offense picture here today. Texas minus rushing in that first quarter against the Stout Knight defense. Texas answers here. Davis still going for the whistle. Right, you're looking at the number one rush defense here. That's the curricular activity there and see the stats coming off the for the quarter. But you know, UCF able to make some plays, a little misdirection, and the runs bouncing outside. And uh, Texas has got to come up, make cleaner tackles. They need to push, force them into being one-dimensional. And that doesn't help when your offense hasn't put points on the board in their first couple of possessions. So George O'Leary is probably liking exactly where his football team is right now. He's going to be very pleased. And he's keeping his defense on the sideline, getting some reps. Second down and 10. Calabrese in trouble. Oh, dangerous as he tosses it forward. And it is really incomplete as Kendall is putting the pressure. Well, they had him dead to rights, no doubt about that, trying to get the ball to A.J. Guyton outside. You see Calabrese coming around the edge, and he just can never get his shoulder square to throw the football. So what does he do? He takes two hands and shot puts it forward, and Guyton right there can't make, can't pull it in. But kind of, lucky. kind of a dicey play there for him. Oh, yes. He's lucky he didn't have that ball picked off or, or something bad really happened. Wow, they're going, you're sophomore. You should have forgotten that play when you are a freshman. But they survive it, and it's third and ten. The crowd gets into it here. Mac Brown also appealed to his crowd, said, hey, you folks need to help us. You, you can't take a weekend off. And a timeout is called here. And we'll take a break as well. Defensive struggle so far. UCF trying to break through. No score in Austin. Welcome back to Austin. No score in the second quarter. A very familiar face around these parts. Sonia Richard, the uh, well-known track star, two-time Olympic gold medalist, just coming off of two world championships. How are things? Oh, man, amazing. I finally won my first world title in Berlin, and it was just the most amazing experience. And to be able to come back home and be welcomed like this was just really overwhelming for me. Now, your, your fiancé could maybe give some tips to this defense right about now. Uh, yeah, I mean, Aaron Ross won the silver one here a couple years ago, and we've been at home just cheering the Longhorns. They've been playing amazing on this season, so we're hoping that it can be like 2006 again. Sonia, congratulations on your success. Okay. All right, thanks very much. Congratulations to Sonia. Hey. Back here, third and ten, ball on the 22 of Texas. Calabri is the central Florida quarterback. Into the end zone and incomplete. Well guarded down there as well. Intended for Kamar Aiken and Shockey Brown providing the coverage. Well, we're pretty good, pretty good offensive front there. They've kind of held up the defensive pressure came from Texas, and you watch the pressure come here. The offense holds up. He just kind of gets comfortable to his right moving and Ball just kind of sails on him out of bounds, but everyone covered in the secondary. But now, field goal opportunity. We thought we'd see this earlier in the ball game. Now, a 39-yard attempt here. Nick Katoy, sophomore from Tampa, Florida, 9 of 14 on the year. This a 39-yarder. They declined to go from 44. This one, he booms through, and Central Florida takes the lead. So the Knights on the board first on the field goal by Katoy. We'll be right back on Academy Sports and Outdoors Big 12 College Football Saturday. UCF strikes first on the 39-yard field goal by Katoy, and there's a look at the scoring drive. Eight plays, 36 yards, and the Knights will kick it off now. Malcolm Williams and D.J. Monroe are deep. Monroe takes it about the three. Wrapped up at near the 20-yard line. And let's check in with Darren Horton now in an Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. All right, thank you very much, Darren. Of course, Miami's a team that this UCF bunch gave a real scare to before falling to earlier this year. Right now, they lead it here, but Shipley trying to even it up to the 40 and the 45 and down in near the 40-yard line as Shipley picks in the McCoy pass. McCoy is 8 of 9. His previous longest pass completion was for 11 yards. He'd take care of that here. Yeah, need to get the ball down the field. He does so. He extends his play bill. He gets out of the pocket very comfortable, and he sees Shipley down the field, and you see Shipley coming all the way across the field in this round. He's continues to work to help his quarterback, and he does so. Catches a nice ball, and almost a, almost a horse collar tackle on the sideline. 44-yard pickup. 
And just like that, Texas down 3 nothing, but in UCF territory. Play action. McCoy got all day. Got a man deep. Incomplete. Looked like a certain touchdown. Credit the defender on that play, Robinson, for getting a hand in and prying it away from, was that Williams? Yeah, Malcolm Williams had that ball there, and he just needed to secure it and pull it in. He you see Colt McCoy, plenty of protection up front. He throws the ball down there nice. You just got to squeeze it, hold on to that football. But, heck, a, ni a nice play there by Robinson to knock the ball out. Just continue to work as a cornerback. Malcolm Williams would come in with 15 receptions for 192 and one touchdown. Missed a golden opportunity there. Texas. Goes right back to Williams. Spins, breaks a tackle. In down to the 19-yard line for Malcolm Williams. Lawrence Young, the junior outside backer, makes the stop for the Knights. Well, when you see a guy 6'3", 220 pounds, he puts a stiff arm out there. And what I like after this is he actually has the acceleration. Watch him as he turns, gives a stiff arm, and then accelerates. Boom. Boy, almost yards. out the gates there Ooh. without the shoestring tackle. Well, he wanted to make up for what he just missed on that previous opportunity. And on first to ten, Johnson will take it to the end zone. Cody Johnson scores, Texas leads. Twenty yards in the TD run for Cody Johnson, his longest of the season. Well, this is Texas football getting a hat on a hat. The big guys do a nice job of staying on their block, gets into the second level of the defense. Everyone is accounted for. Nobody in the hole to take care of Cody Johnson as he rumbles into the end zone. Point after attempt coming up for Hunter Lawrence here. He's 36 of 37 in PAT. Shipley is holding. The kick is good. The senior from Bernie, Texas, Hunter Lawrence, knocks it through after Cody Johnson. He shed a little weight. As a result, he shed some tacklers. All right, thank you very much, Darren. As uh, everybody that's in that unbeaten group saying, boy, we don't need any injuries <laughs> no. to key players here. Cody Johnson looked very healthy as uh, they listed him at 250 in the program. He's actually about 240, and he's dedicated himself during this season to lose some of that weight. As a result, he's getting more carries. Well, I actually said he rumbled into the end zone. I don't, I probably didn't. He was speeding into the end zone. <laughs> His speed has improved as he's lost a few pounds. McDuffie will return it from the four for UCF. Whoa, whoa, there's a hit as that Texas special teams group is. Beasley? Antoine Cobb, number 24, coming down coverage in here. And take a look at this here. That's a good tackle right there. Cobb putting the hammer on him, and Central Florida will start its own 16. That field goal by UCF. It's almost like it was an igniter for Texas. Well, this defense needs to pick up. You see Will Muschamp there. I'm sure he's told his defense, we need to make some plays here, get our offense back out there on the field. We need to get a three and out. First and 10 from the 16 for the Knights of Central Florida. And UCF saw that 3-0 lead disappear in a matter of a minute 11. Beat it out on the flat, but not much damage done that time. One of the things the Texas defense has, Bill, is speed. And Sergio Kendall coming from the inside out from a defensive end spot. You see him making the play outside the numbers on the defense. That's what this Texas defense does. It'll run down these small, these plays behind the line of scrimmage, and the defensive ends are fast enough to get there. You see Thomas missing the tackle initially, but Sergio Kendall always a motor coming down the line of scrimmage. Calabrese to Guyton. Just picking up a yard, second and nine now. As you take a look at the balance here, or lack thereof, of UCF trying to establish that running game, but second and nine, they got to throw it and complete it. Forward progress stopped at the 21 yard line as Beasley in on the play. Well, that's a decent job there, keeping the play manageable. You're able to get the ball outside to a receiver. And Deion Beasley up here, he's going to break up on the tackle there and don't, don't allow a big play for UCF. and UCF, they've got a third down and four now manageable. They need to continue to move the change as they have the last couple of drives. Aiken, the receiver. Aiken, Texas fans remember from two years ago when Central Florida scared the daylights out of the Longhorns when they opened up their new stadium in Orlando. He had four grabs for 49 yards. Texas came back to win that game 35-32. 
Third down, and Calabrese has to unload it here to avoid the sack. Well, he's thrown it with his left hand, which is unique. You saw him once earlier in the ball game, kind of shot put it with two hands pushing that ball away. Now he's rolling to his left again. He can't get his shoulder square. You see the speed coming through there. That's Muckleroy trying to get to the quarterback. He gets picked off with the left-handed toss out of bounds. It's a smart play by Calabrese to save the yardage. You see the look on his face. Hey, just had to get rid of that baby. No kick it away as Blake Lincoln. High kick. Shipley. Fair catch. Got it at the 28-yard line. And Texas will take over there. They got that three and out we were yeah. talking about. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference. Today, we highlighted Texas champion. It's how you play. Certainly fits number 12 here. Colt McCoy, the senior from Tuscola out of Jim Ned High School in Texas. And look at the, among the active NCAA football players. The numbers he's put up are just mind-boggling. Tremendous numbers. I tell you, he's had a great body of work for his career at the University of Texas. Even here at the University of Texas, he has 44 school records, Bill. Just a tremendous quarterback. And his completion percentage, 70.6% as far as career completion percentage. That will eclipse Colt Brennan from Hawaii at 70.4% if, uh, if he finishes his career. First to 10 here. A little bit underthrown that time, slipping and falling, trying to come back to the football was John Childs. You know, Colt McCoy would probably tell you, we haven't asked him, we had a chance to visit him a lot of time yesterday, but I think if you asked him, what are you most proud of? It'd probably be, I got 40 wins, and with a couple more, I'll be the winningest college quarterback. Well, he did not say that exactly, but we, we kind of <laughs> helped him along in that mode. Yeah. But he's all about just winning for his football team. There's no doubt about that. He's such a team player. That's what they like about him here at the University of Texas. Scrambling here. That's been a big asset for him as he scampers out of bounds and picks up five or six on the way. And Bruce Miller chasing him there, number 49, the junior from Canton, Georgia. And you see the confidence and the ability that he has in the pocket. Bruce Miller, watch him get up there to middle, number 49, gets off that. He just can't catch him. Colt McCoy showing his speed on the outside. Last season, we really noticed the improvement in his speed. Really got his body in shape. This season, the same thing. So Colt McCoy is tuned up, and he's playing very good football right now. And speaking of running, third best in Texas history as far as running quarterbacks came in with 1,361 yards rushing behind Vince Young, of course, at the top, and then Aikens. And completes this one to John Childs to move the chains as Derek Holman makes the stop on Childs, the junior former quarterback out of Dallas. Yeah, you talk about former quarterback now playing receiver for the Longhorns, and he's one of the receivers that has had to step up in the absence of Quan Cosby and others that Colt McCoy did not have early this season. You know what, Bill? The offensive receivers needed to learn, learn the system, learn how to get open. Let's face it, he didn't have as many guys open early on in the season to make those accurate, complete throws. Jordan Shipley was really the main character there, but now he's able to move it around the field to John Childs, Kirkendall, and the like. Malcolm Williams, we've seen him already in this football game. They are getting better as receivers and getting open. First attempt from the 48, McCoy out of the pocket. Now, carries, flags are thrown. He did a nice job there of deking the defense because he was already across the line he of was. scrimmage and he was acting like he was still going to throw, but he knew all along what he was going to do with it. Holding on the offense, number 63. The 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Colt was kind of deceptive on the outside. Take a look here in the middle and maybe, I guess that might be holding right there. Michael Huey. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's waving his arms. Help, help. Well, Huey's a guy that uh, we saw got injured early on this year. Has fought that ankle injury throughout the year and He's waving at us. He sees yeah. us. We're, we're, you know, he, it, these guys know when they're on camera, Bill. Well, it's, it's like on cue. I feel for him <laughs> because too often the only time they get mentioned is on a holding penalty. They've been playing very good and very improved team offensively on the line as the season has gone on. This pass is complete as Kirkendall in the crossover brought down by Hallman. But uh, a long way to go still first down. And this is just a clear out here. You see all the receivers go downfield, then Kirkendall come underneath, and this is where Colt throws the football. Doing a good job of coming up and making the tackle on him. So the UCF defense, as I told you earlier in the ballgame, they're going to try to keep the place in front 
and they'll come up and make those tackles. Kirkendall last year, 21 receptions. He's bettered that already with four games to go here. And this one completes to Schiffer. That is a first down. Mm, they're going to be close, though, on the spot. He rolled forward. Yeah. Out. Probably a pretty generous spot, in my opinion, on that catch. But uh, looks like they're going to give him the first down on that. They're, they're moving, motioning across as George Shipley kind of runs a little seven route, a little flag route, and get outside and goes down on the ground to grab that football. 16 yards on the pickup. And we had no problem to take. Figuring that out in this beautiful HD screen. HD, you got to have it, huh? You got to have it. Here is Whitaker, and Whitaker gets to the 40, just shy of that on the first down carry. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Texas O trying to get it going here after a scoreless first quarter and then a field goal by UCF, a brief lead, a minute 11 later. Texas scored on Johnson's 20-yard run. They got it back after a three and out, and they're looking for more here. This one thrown away. Colt was chased out of the pocket near the Texas sideline, and Darius Nall on the play, a sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia, for UCF, applying the defensive pressure. Well, this is pretty good defensive effort, I think, by UCF. Matching up in the secondary with the speed that Texas has, and then trying to contain Colt McCoy, which is not an easy job, but they matched up long enough, and they had the pressure. Remember, they've had pretty good pressure on the season. 27 sacks coming into this game for the UCF defense. Dave Huxtable has coached his defensive front pretty well. They've given up 121 yards of offense in this quarter after just 43 in the first quarter. Texas sees seven plays, 31 yards, and third down complete. Shipley tried to make a move and slips at the 23-yard line where Ishmael is there to make the tackle, if you will. Yeah, come on, the outside trying to cover Jordan Shipley. This is... He's open. I tell you, how quick is Jordan Shipley? He just makes people kind of turn around, which is what he did to Kamal there. And the turf kind of got him. You take a look at the U.S. Marine leaders. How about this for consistency as Shipley now with 20 games consecutive of at least four catches. Briscoe, who's a heck of a talent at Kansas, is second, a distant second. Bozzi Whitaker trying to turn the corner. Got a little help from Kirkendall to pick up a few extra yards. Don't know if he got the first down or not. Looks like he's a little shy of that. Josh Robinson, the freshman cornerback from Sunrise, Florida, covering for UCF. Well, big plays happen in the run game when you're able to have receivers block downfield. Watch Kirkendall, number 11, block right there. You see Jordan Shipley, number 8, out in front. They occupy the defense so that Fozzie Whitaker can benefit from their work and get positive yards for the Horns. Texas, very methodical drive here. Tenth play of this current drive. Second and short. McCoy keeps it. And then hit by a wall as Ishmael there to make the stop. You know, it's an, ex yeah, it's an experienced defensive front. We've talked about that for UCF. Seven of the seven starters that they have up there, those guys all played in the 2007 game down in Orlando where they kind of took the, the horns of the woodshed, as George O'Leary refer referred to it. That's a good job of stepping up, making the tackle by, by Kamal. So Texas third and one now at the 13-yard line. And, yeah, how about that for Conference USA? The Knights 3-2 and two in CUSA taking a break to go against the second-ranked Longhorns here today. But they played some defense. Johnson, that's another one. Powers his way in. Well, that's a touchdown signal there. And the wait and Texas with Cody Johnson. Body was not up to making the stop. Well, when Cody Johnson came around that edge, he saw the end zone. And only one player out there that he had to go through. He's ready to lower the boom on him, but Cody just did not uh, step up there and do it. Number 23 for the night. So good job around the edge. Cody Johnson getting another touchdown on the ground. Johnson is second of the day, his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. And Texas now for the point after. And Lawrence. Knocks it through. So Texas, a couple of quick scores here in the second quarter to take control. Well, you see him coming around the edge here. Now, Bodie Johnson should step up here and try to make a big, firm hit on him, but he doesn't do so. Now he's just going to drag the big guy into the end zone if you allow that to happen. 
Good blocking on the left side of the line by the Longhorns offense. And you see Cody's numbers on the day. A couple of scores. That's pretty good production. 11 plays, 72 yards. And Cody Johnson gets his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Longhorns, 529 to go in the half, cap off an 11 play drive. Yeah, 72 yards, just moving down the field methodically. And Jordan Shipley getting in the mix, getting a big first down for, for Colt McCoy. And that's kind of just how this offense clicks along here, Bill. You got Colt McCoy, the ringleader, Jordan Shipley pitching in and making big plays, then turn it over to the run game. It's a very blended offensive attack that Greg Davis has implemented here with Matt Brown. And the numbers are tremendous that they've had over the over the course of time that Greg Davis and, and Matt Brown have run this offense here. They have rewritten the record books of the University of Texas offensive. Justin Tucker will kick it off here as Baldwin and McDuffie are deep. And it'll be taken from the goal line by McDuffie. McDuffie straight ahead. And another hard hit by the Texas special teams. Is that Cobb again? Yeah, maybe so. Ooh. Cobb's finding a way to get down there and likes a little contact. Send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, it's a tradition here at Texas that every Friday before a home game, the kids from the team go and visit kids in the hospital, hope to brighten their day, different things like that. This week, they reversed the roles, and the kids came here. The, the Longhorns got to interact with the guys, um, let them get up close and personal, see things here uh, around the 40 acres. And uh, Matt Brown says this is a way for his team to remain grounded, also keep things in perspective, and uh, a way for them to get back from here in the community. They do a terrific job. Thanks, Emily. They got the big picture and got it well in focus here at the University of Texas. As UCF, they need to establish something here offensively, give their defense a little bit of a breather now here. Yeah, they had a pretty good uh, opening quarter for against Texas. They probably kind of went shoulder to shoulder with them, about the same yardage, about the same number of plays in the first quarter. But now Texas defense trying to take hold here in this football game and impose its will on this young quarterback. And Rob Calabrese is going to continue to fight, and his offense has to continue to do so. And they need to just continue to get first downs. That's very important for UCF to do that, so it kind of keeps their defense off the field. Jonathan Davis, the freshman, picked up three on that first down carry. Makes it second and seven now. And again, on the ground for the Knights. And out to the 26, maybe 27-yard line for Davis as Emmanuel Acho makes the stop. Emmanuel Acho stepping up in the hole, just a sophomore linebacker doing a pretty good job. And he and his older brother, Sam Acho, those guys together, they, they've made big plays here for the Texas defense. Bumble recoveries, force fumbles, those kinds of things. So I call them the brothers Acho. They're, 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 they're a pretty good story out there. I like those guys, their intensity, and they play to the end of the play. They're always around the football. Macho Acho. There you go. They are. I'll tell you what, they bring it. Make you see double. Third and three now for UCF. Oh, Calabrese on the option. Nice look of play, and he's got the first down as Kendall makes the tackle, but. Very nifty by Rob Calabrese. I tell you, Nolan Brewster comes into the hole, and he should light him up, but he doesn't do so. Watch number 27 come in right here, and he should light up the quarterback. But you know what? <laughs> Calabrese, kind of a shifty guy, pulls it back, gets up the field. He bit, didn't he? No, yeah. Brewster did. Well, you run that little option. That's what you need to do. Quarterback needs to be a part of that option game and be able to take it up the field as he did. So they keep possession. Central Florida as UCF will have it first and 10 now. Moving 3.44 to go in the half. Nothing doing this time for Davis. It kind of looks as in the Houston Kindle. Kind of looked like the play that Texas ran earlier where they had to do the throwback to the quarterback. Davis put the brakes on so fast, I thought he's going to pitch it back to Rob Calabrese for a long pass. Take a look at how he comes up and stops. Whoop, I thought he's going to pitch it back, but he doesn't do so. And the Texas defense with Kendall and Lamar Houston just eat him up. So second and long now. Texas 14, UCF 3 here in Austin. Just a beautiful day for football here at Darrell K. Well, Texas Memorial Stadium. Look at the second quarter and the yardage score. 162 to 30 for the Longhorn. Calabrese. Complete, but for a negative yardage on the play is Kendall and Brown were not fooled on the pass play to Guyton. Well, you've got to check out of this play. You have the defense aligned outside on the outside. It's man on man. He knows that, but it's bump coverage, and you have to have an extra blocker out there that UCF does not able to get out from their interior to make that play happen. I think that Rob Cattlebury should have checked out of that play. Not a good defense to run that against. Third and 14 now for UCF. See what Calabrese and crew come up with with this Texas crowd getting on its feet now. 
Virgil O'Leary looks on. His club 3-0 lead, long gone. Trying to maintain possession here. Calabrese, watch in trouble again, and stumbles forward. But again, as Gary mentioned, that was Sam Acho that time that tripped him up. Yeah, just comes off the edge and does a little twist. Sam Acho coming on the inside. Watch on the right side of your screen. Is he going to spin around, get around the twist inside? Lamar Houston took up three blockers. Sam Acho got the benefit there. Good job of continuing the quarterback. And uh, Calabrese going to have to come off the field. Thought he might have had more on that play. Clinging to punt it away here. Shipley, the deep man. Yeah, the sun bill stays away. Yeah, and it takes a UCF roll inside the 10-yard line with 135 remaining in the half, and Texas will have to go a long way. Jordan Shipley could not see the football. He looked up. The sun is directly coming in from the south. It's that time of day where you've got to do that, and you've got to protect your eyes as a punt returner to have a chance to make that grab. A 70-yard punt for Klingon, and that is the longest of his career for the junior from Coral Springs, Florida. And I'll give Shipley credit because how many times do we see guys go back and even if they don't lose it in the sun, they kind of hang around like, oh, I, I might pick it up. If you're not going to feel it, or in that case, you can't see it, go get away from it. And he did the right thing there, even though it turned out to be a big bonus for the Knights. Yeah, just take your lumps and go and go out there and play offense. And this offense, they don't care where they start from. They'll, they'll feel like they have the confidence they can move it down the field, jumping off here at their own 6 7 yard line. 205 yards of offense as they start this drive. McCoy, cut out down. Zone. Shipley, can he stay in bounds? 40. Puts on the brakes and then is brought down near the 40-yard line of UCF. And that long distance to score was just got cut in half. <laughs> well, that was his punt return right there. He just caught the ball <laughs> instead of a punt return. Well, Jordan Shipley, he and Colt McCoy have hooked up on long plays over their career at the University of Texas, no doubt about that. And I called touchdown as I saw this play happen because you're going to see Shipley just kind of run on the out and come down the sideline, and secondary does not account for him. Colt McCoy had to underthrow that a little bit and spun him around. Otherwise, it's a touchdown. 53 yards in the pickup. First to 10. Coming back, and it is picked off by the Knights in the secondary. And UCF gets the turnover at the 16, make it the 17-yard line. Josh Robinson with his fourth interception of the year. And for Robinson, that's the best on the UCF defense. Well, here's Robinson got a snake underneath that, and he's just going to see the ball and go underneath the receiver here. The ball needs to be thrown out there. Colton McCoy thought he could fit it in there. Good job by Robinson of kind of staying in the weeds and then coming in front of the receiver, Kirkendall, trying to get that interception. As you said, Bill, fourth interception for him on the season and a nice turnover for the Knights. Robinson, a freshman out of Sunrise, Florida Plantation High School. And a receiver as well in his high school days got injured. And he gets his fourth pick for the night. So their defense answers the call with inside a minute to go. We'll see if they just keep it on the ground here. First half winding down. That Calibri is, well, he'll keep it on the ground. Kendall says thank you. And did Texas call a timeout? Yes. And Mac Brown ran out there to the 15-yard line and got the line judge and called that timeout. They want to preserve the time and get this defense to churn here. And Calabrese trying to do the quarterback draw, trying to get something positive. And Kendall just getting off the block. And right there, that's what you do. Hey, they come in with a bruised quarterback in Hodges. You better be careful in running Calabrese too often. <laughs> Or you may have another one as you take a look at what Kendall is capable of. Say his numbers are just eye popping, and he he's a guy built that's got a motor, runs up and down the field, and he is can, relentless on the quarterback. And as we saw there, he can shed the blockers with the best of them. I thought Max showed good speed and rushing he out did. to get that timeout call. <laughs> well, he's got he's got both. But was he had both knees replaced? I what what so. was a titanium main? <laughs> Set it down to Emily real quick. Well, guys, this Texas defense has thrived in sudden change situations coming into this game. 16 turnovers for the Texas offense. Only 17 points have been scored off of those turnovers, and only 10 go to the defense because one was a pick six. Seven of those possessions resulted in negative yards. So Will Muschamp's group off to a good start on this sudden change possession. Yeah, call answer and pick up the other guy, or in this case, the other unit. <laughs> Let's see what they can do in UCF. Second down with 52 seconds to go in the half. We're going to hand it off and Davis to get outside. Kendall again. 
stays in bounds as they're trying to kill the clock. And yeah, Kendall there to make the stop. You know, Bill, since Will Muschamp has come to the University of Texas, they have held all 21 teams below their season scoring average. And actually, they've held 13 of those teams to 14 points or less. And when you get an offense like Greg Davis has deployed here, you're going to win a lot of football games. And Will Muschamp, he's a great defensive coordinator. And obviously, the, the head coach in waiting here at the University of Texas. And another timeout called here as Texas wants to get its hands back on the football. And with a third down coming up, the third and five from the 22 is George O'Leary trying to get in the locker room. Still in contention here with a couple of Cody Johnson touchdowns, the difference. You know, one of the things about Will Muschamp that he's able to do is he's, he, he's a great teacher of football. He's got, I, talk, I call it a fast twitch brain for football. Well, he imparts that knowledge with his players, and he's got a way that he actually teaches them to coach football. We'll listen to that. We teach our players how we want them to watch the film, and then we assign what we call signal college to our players. We get our defensive players to talk Friday night about backfield sets, about offensive lineman sets, about receiver splits, all of the little things that make the difference in being a good team. And you can just tell yeah. from that little sound bite as they stop them here on third down, and Lamar Houston making the tackle. They're good. They're good learners, if you will. You know what, there's coaches, they can only coach so much ability, so much speed, so much size, all that stuff. They really can't bring that out. But they can make players smarter, and they can help them along in that process, teaching players to, to watch film and how to watch it, what to look for. That's the mark of a good football team. Mac Brown, they, he knows how to watch tape. And I tell you that uh, yeah, Will Muschamp certainly knows how to watch tape, and he's taught his players how to do that. What to take from it? Do you get clues from the other team as you watch that that you can use in the game and then you can really accelerate. And that's what uh, that's what the coaching is and that's what a mark of a good defense. So they use that timeout and now they will get the football back and let's see if Shipley, the sun's actually under a cloud right here so he may not have the same problem he had when Cleveland booted that 70 yarder a moment ago. Another good kick and Shipley got a beat on this one from the 30. Shipley stopped at the 41-yard line where Texas will have 28 seconds to operate. Yeah, plenty of time, though, for them to get down the field, perhaps in the field goal range, and Jordan Shipley getting you know, a few yards there on the return. Good coverage, though, by UCF. They've actually got a pretty decent coverage unit, both on their punt group and their kickoff coverage group, and they're pretty, uh, pretty matched, I think, both these teams in the kickoff, in the kick, uh, in the special teams area. 46 yards on the punt, 11 on the return, and... Texas first and 10 from the 41 remember in their big win against Oklahoma State last week they scored with nine seconds to go in the half against the Cowboys to add to that advantage over the middle and Kirkendall the receiver but you can't stop the clock and there's 17 16 as Hogue made the tackle Seven seconds is McCoy. Could be the last play, will be the last play. Brought down here to end the first half as Jarvis Gathers makes the tackle. Senior out of Andrews, South Carolina. And he came in with seven sacks. He'll be get credited for another one there as George O'Leary's club heads to the locker room on the short side at 14 to 3 after a scoreless first quarter. The Knights had the first score of the game with the field goal from Katoy before a couple of Cody Johnson runs put Texas on top. And let's send it down to Emily Jones with Mac Brown. Well, Coach, off to a little bit of a slow start. I think you would characterize it as such. What adjustments do you make at halftime? Well, we didn't get off to the start we wanted, but we missed field goal. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape, and Central Florida is a team that's going to try to keep the ball. And that's what we told our guys. They're going to run it four yards and three yards, and then they have a great punter, and he got into the wind and kept us in poor field position. So I thought we played really well the second half. We came back, or second quarter. We got 14 points. We get the ball to start the third, so we need to go get something out of that possession. Defensively, Will Muschamp's group continues to thrive in those sudden change situations. How huge was that? Yeah, it was big. They did a great job, and, and uh, I think Colt's hot. He's doing well. As of uh, end of the win, last throw hung a little bit, but I'm, I'm excited about Colt for the second half. All right, Coach, Thank thanks you. so much. We appreciate the time. Again, Texas up 14-3 to at the halftime to send it to L.A. and Darren Horton in the studio.